so I went to my closet. After yet another argument with my husband, I went down on my knees. I cried out to the Lord and I just told him I give up. I, I said, Lord, I, I'm stuck. I really don't know what else to do. I've, I, I've actually wanted this done. Like I give it, I give everything to you. And I just said, please take over. Because I, I know it's, you know, I can't, I can't do it on my own. So I asked him to take over my life and I told him to take, take the load off my shoulders. And then, and then I cried myself to sleep. And the next day, oh my gosh, I felt that he really did take off the load of my shoulders because I was really, I was, I felt at peace. I felt comfort and I was even joyful. And it was it was the joy that that only the Lord can bring. It's that unspeakable joy that's written in the Bible. So um, I just wanna let you know that I, this is really something that I am not comfortable in doing. I'm, uh, I'm pretty scared actually because I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I've never really shared my story um, in public and I choose the people I share my story to just because um, I'm afraid of ridicule or embarrassment, but the Lord has been pressing it in my heart and I really am coming uh, from a place of love, no condemnation, no offense intended and this is really sharing Jesus to you guys and how he touched my heart and how he came into my life. So I pray that you will have an open mind and open heart as you listen and watch my watch me tell my story about the love of God and how amazing Jesus Christ is. All right, so let me start from the beginning. I was born and raised in the Philippines, um, a very devout Catholic. And um, my grandma, actually, I'm very thankful for her because she was the one who introduced uh, the Lord to me. And we were, we were living in a poor neighborhood and my mom had to go abroad so she can help me with my schooling and she can help me and our ex whole extended family financially. And while she was abroad, my, my dad, cheated on her um, it was a big mess and I was kind of like uh, supervised by different people in our extended family and there was a lot of struggle growing up um, I found uh, there was a lot of low points in my life I'm not gonna get into detail but it, it was a lot of struggle but I'm really thankful to the Lord because if it wasn't for him I'd probably be somewhere else <laughs> in, in the direction of my life so um, my mom came back home and we migrated to Canada and I was so like I was so um, in on, on fire for the Lord that I started serving him through the Catholic community I was part of this amazing community and I was a youth leader and um, throughout my my years growing up I was actively serving as the youth leader I took um, teachers college and so I became a teacher and when I was an, when I was actually married I became a Sunday school teacher in our Catholic in our church in our local church and I was also a lector and there was even a part in my adult life that I was a choir so I was really really very actively involved in my Catholic community and I was also um, because I was so passionate about being Catholic that I also became a religion teacher. So I know a lot of the teachings of the Catholic Church, the doctrines, you know, the history. And so I was very deeply rooted in the Catholic Church. So that's my background. Um, fast forward to 2014, I was already married with three kids at the time. And I didn't real realize that the my baggage is that um, the baggages from my childhood, I brought it with. I brought them with me to my marriage, so it took a toll on my marriage. Um, we were struggling a lot in 2014. My husband and I were fighting a lot, and I was also insecure uh, with a lot of things because first I 
grew so big so I, I gained so much weight that I was very insecure with my body and I was also not having any permanent jobs and I was a teacher already but at the time we just moved to a new city everything was new I could not find any permanent position um, so I had that insecurity of not being able to provide for my children for my family and I was dependent on my husband and I felt really useless and that also you know that also brought me down at the same time I had three kids and I really did not know if I was doing a, you know the right job as a mom and I was really frustrated with myself I was getting tired I was getting depressed I was it was it was a low point in my life um, it was to a point it was just a lot of things uh, but those were the main things really but it was to a point that I was feeling so hopeless that one night I filled up my tub with water and I was just thinking you know what if I just get you know get into the water and not come up you know what's gonna happen maybe maybe everything will be fine maybe you know my husband won't even care because at the time we were arguing a lot every single day we would fight and I was actually I was hating him it was really toxic that year was a bad year so but then you know i remembered my faith yeah at that time i i actually my faith in the lord was placed in the back burner because my priorities have shifted it became my family right so um but then i remembered my faith when i was younger so i went to my closet after yet another argument with my husband i went down on my knees I cried out to the Lord and I just told him I give up I I said Lord I I'm stuck I really don't know what else to do I've I, I've actually wanted this done like I give it I give everything to you and I just said please take over because I, I know it's you know, I can't I can't do it on my own so I asked him to take over my life and I told him to take take the load off my shoulders and then, and then I cried myself to sleep. And the next day, oh my gosh, I felt that he really did take off the load of my shoulders because I was really, I was, I felt at peace. I felt comfort and I was even joyful. And it was, it was the joy that, that, only the Lord can bring it's that unspeakable joy that's written in the Bible and I, I know it's him it was him that that it's only him who, he can only he's the only one who can do these things and so it was weird at first because I really could not explain why I was so happy but then I realized that I did ask him the night before to take over and so he did and I started hearing him clearly and it's not an audible, it wasn't an audible voice where he says, you know, I am God. Not like that at all, but it was more like an instantaneous thought that, you know, that comes up in your mind. It's like a conscience almost. And so in the beginning, I was like, um, I was a bit confused and questioning if it was really him. You know, I even thought for one time I was crazy. But then the Lord rest assured, like he assured me that, you know, that his sheep hear his voice. And this is written in, in the Bible. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. In John, uh, John 10, sorry about that, I'm outside. In John 10, verse 27, they hear my voice and, and they, they follow me, right? So look it up it's right there and what because i've given my life to him i'm actually part of his fold now that you know i he's my shepherd right so it, it that's that's why i could hear him and so but of course we have to discern all the time when we hear the spirit because we don't know sometimes it might be the wrong spirit and that's also in the bible right but it also says in the word that you'll know if it's god's voice because it's it's leading you towards christ you know it's about christ the resurrected christ so 
every time I hear his wor his his words or his his voice, I would always make sure that it's going towards the Lord. And he even told me himself. He said, "You will know it's me because it's causing me to come towards me and not away from me." So it's it, you'll know if it's me because I'm telling you to pray more, to spend more time with me, to to love more, to be more gentle, and it's not you know and these are all in the commandments and these are all his his instructions and not towards sinning and not towards the enemy right so so that's how it all started and i started because i was having this relationship with him and i'm i was asking him every time i do something every decision i would make i have to consult with him and even my my health and wellness business i asked him to bless it and and if it's okay because now everything revolves around him and truly it is through being with him in the silence right and just going away from the world disconnected disconnecting from everyone else and being in the spiritual and that's how i really gotten to know more of him and also of course reading his his word which is the bible so a couple of things that I would like to share with you that I'm compelled to share um, are the things I've learned. Um, is one of them is praying to the saints because I again since I started, you know, really having this relationship with him, I asked him, you know, if the things that I was practicing if they're from from him because before I just followed everything blindly according to the Catholic Church and according to what I was told because I was an obedient child. And so this time I want to make sure that I, everything I did, everything that I practiced was from him, right? So I asked him about praying to the saints because I, I was a saint girl. I had, whenever I would teach religion, I would have my students, you know, I would explain to them different situations and different saints that they can call to uh, who can help them in any situation, right? So my patron saint is Saint Anthony and you know, so I would say I would always call into St. Anthony for whatever, especially when I lose stuff because he's the patron saint of loose articles, right? So just um, I would, yeah, I would call into them and pray to them. So I wanted to make sure if that was, if I should still continue doing that. And the Lord pointed me to this passage, John fourteen sixteen, or John 14, verse 6, I'm sorry. Um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And we all know, I'm sure we know this passage, but, you know, because I, I know this passage. And we, I would always say that I use the saints as just intercessor, as a mediator, right? But the Lord told me, you don't need a me. I don't need a mediator because he is enough. He is the only way. It did not say there that, you know, it says no one comes to the Father except through me. It didn't say through the saints or through Mary or through anybody else. It's only through him. So he is enough. If he's enough, why do I need to go to anyone else? Right? So this one thing that he pointed it out to me. And also, it also says in Timothy, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. man. Only one. One mediator. We don't need any others. Right? So that in itself is like a very powerful argument for me to stop praying to the saints. And then he also told me in my heart, he said to me, you know, why, like, like how, how do you know that these saints are in heaven with me? Right? How do we really know who's in heaven and who's not? Right? Just because, um, Sorry, just because the Pope said they're, you know, they're in heaven does not really mean we know. We're not really for sure where they're at. And if we are praying to the dead, because they're dead people, right? The, the Catholic saints I'm pertaining to, um, we're really talking to the dead. And the more I, I studied the word, you know, I, I found out that talking to the dead is called necromancy and it's really a sin. That's why in the Bible it says that we should not be talking to mediums or psychics. They're all from the enemy, right? So that in it, like that's, it's right there. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like, so I've been sitting this whole time, right? And the third thing that I've, that, that I've learned as well is that the more, like I've read this from the Bible as well, that saints in the Bible are people who are alive, 
We are the saints. The saints are the disciples of Christ who are doing his work. That's Christians right now. And that's you and I. And so if we're interceding, the intercessors really are us. So I can intercede for you if you need prayers. You know, you can intercede for me. But we, the, the, the dead people, even if they're supposedly holy, they can't do anything for us. They're dead, right? So there's just too many arguments that just made me realize that I need to stop. And it's God is really enough. Okay? He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Like He can do everything and anything. So really, we don't need any others. So that was one of the things I learned. And then the second thing was about the statues, right? All these images and all these um, statues that are in churches. And I'll tell you a story quickly. When I went to, um, this is like, I know this is in, a, in all the churches, but this was like my, one of my turning points. When we went to our business um, conference, we went to this Catholic church because it was a Sunday, you know, it fell on a Sunday, the third day. And of course, as devout Catholics, we had to go to church. So we visited this Mary Magdalene church and right in the middle was the image of the big statue of Mary Magdalene. And again, I asked and I consulted the Lord, like what, why, you know, is this even supposed to be how it is? Is this really, you know, how, is this the right way? You know, I, I consulted and right away there was a tug in my heart and the Holy Spirit is saying, you know, um, Jesus is the only way. And, and, and Jesus was, was like maybe at, at the bottom, like you can't even see, but the big Mary Magdalene statue is right in the middle. And so I researched more and then I've, I've consulted with the Lord and it says in uh, Exodus, right, that we really should not be in Exodus 20, verse 4 to 5, you shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. So I know that as Catholics, I used to say that we're not really worshiping these images, um, like especially Mama Mary, because like, oh yeah, so... Let's rewind a little bit when um, we were at the church I had to go to the bathroom and I saw on the way to the bathroom in the hallway there's this big statue of Mama Mary with a kneeler and some candles and before when I you know was I was a Catholic I just didn't care because it was like it's you know it, it's common practice right it's just it's normal for for um, for a shrine to be there it's normal for the image of a statue of Mary to be there and all the saints and they have kneelers but because now like the Lord has really opened up my heart, it gave me this, the red flag. And so I was feeling like I needed to, to research more. And so that's what it says there. And then this, and then it also says here um, in Psalms 115, four verse eight, you know, that these idols are work of human hands. They, they have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes, but do not see. Ears, but do not hear. And it continues on with the different parts of the body. And those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. And I know, and, and this was what I was saying, like as Catholic before, I would, you know, say, you know, we're, don't, we're not really worshiping them, right? That's the first thing. But when I reflected upon my past and thought of the things I used to do, I did bow down on these statues. I revered them. And that's really worshiping them. And, and they, the Lord also made, you know, made it be known to me that that was a form of worship. And the fact that I'm trusting my prayers to them and asking them for intercession, that's more than just treating them like a representation or like just that's actually. And, and besides, why are we respecting a statue? It's, they have no mouth, no ears. They're not alive. Right. And I also know that we used to defend and say um, the statues are like pictures of our dead family or friends. Right. But our de I would understand if it's a family or friend and we have a picture and because we know them, we know who they were. We spent time with them when they were alive. We, you know, but the statues of saints, we don't know who they are. Like we don't even know if. I don't know their past really just because it was said the ones that was their story does not necessarily mean that we already know them that we should pray and revere them and respect them we it's not necessary and that's what the lord has kind of put 
and the Bible, right? Of course, I always confirm with the word. There's a lot more actually. Um, if you just type up um, Bible passages about statues, it's just so much stuff. And, and that's a form of idolatry. And I just, I was so, um, I was, I, I felt so bad because I used to do that. I used to, you know, have the statues and, and pray to them, kneel in front of them. Those are all part of worship right so i stopped doing that and the lord also kind of told me that you know it's it's not basically i realized that throughout my life i was out of focus i was i would pray all these prayers but like for example the rosary i would pray the rose we would pray the rosary and that would be our like evening prayer so basically we would pray to mary and that was it like we never really got the chance to connect with the Lord because we were praying the rosary. It became like our our prayer for the night, but the Lord made me realize that that's really not to me because you're not really praying to me, right? You're, you're going through different avenues instead of straight to me. And it's really simple. The Lord wants a relationship, wanted a relationship with me and that I could just spend time in his presence in silence and just feel his embrace even now like i can feel his presence in the wind in the cool breeze in nature and in the silence of being with him and in worship right and and spending time with him and it's very simple it's just kind of like any other relationship you talk you listen you develop that friendship and you spend a lot of time the more you spend time the i realize the more i spend time with the lord the more i've gotten to know him and the more i spend time in his word which is the bible the more that he revealed himself to me so that's when i have that turning point actually so those are things there's more but one of my really major turning points was when i found out that the pope has consecrated the world to mary and because why it should be our christ why are we consecrating to the mother instead of the savior so i started really um doubting the catholic church and i started asking the lord to lead me more um, towards where he wants me to go and I even asked like should I change religion and the answer that I got is not really about the religion right it's not it's because but wherever you look at there will always be imperfection imperfections because we're humans but it is really our own faith right but the church it's about you have to we have for me I had to look for a church that will help me grow towards him so the the church is really just for us to to really enhance that relationship to be able to really know him more and to serve him more and to really expose the truth to us straight to him through the bible and um so that's what i did and he was he actually led me to to where i'm at i'm at now you know so i actually had this just last year i had this burning desire in my heart so from 2014 to last year i was really getting to know more of christ and and who i am and the, the gifts that he's given me i'm i'm so excited to let you guys know that because of jesus christ and his love for me my husband and i are so much better like um we are so happy now and it is really because i've surrendered it to God and it really just takes that that decision to just give it all and surrender and let him take over because he is waiting for us and he's waiting for for us to just open our hearts and he's a very he's a very very gentle God and he's not going to force himself in so we need to really open that up and so we are so much happier so last year I finally got baptized and it was also him like I was thinking you know lord should i get baptized because i was baptized as a child and but he made me realize that as a child it wasn't my decision it was not it was my parents decision but being baptized as an adult it was my decision and it was my way of proclaiming to the world that i am his and that i am proud to be called his child i die with my sins and i rise up with christ you know with the water and he actually the lord did it all like he 
he pointed me to his word and that was my final answer when I asked him like really Lord should I get baptized and he pointed me to Acts 22 um, verse 16 when he said you know what are you waiting for go and get baptized <laughs> he said that in in the word and that was my answer and so August 18th last year I was baptized in the on the beach and it was beautiful he provided the Lord provided me with a pastor beautiful day a beautiful location and there's no there's no more turning back from there so that's my story and if you haven't yet accepted the Lord as your own Savior um, this is I will walk you out I have a prayer here if you know if you'd like to join me just repeat after me and this is a this is if you're ready and if you're really believe in your heart this is your time for for you to experience you know the love of God and how amazing he is and what he can do in your life then I ask you to join me and repeat repeat after me so Lord Jesus I thank you for this opportunity to be able to get to know you more I ask that you please forgive me for all of my sins I ask of you to be the Lord and Savior of my life I want to journey with you from now on in your mighty and powerful name Jesus Christ amen well for those of you who have accepted Christ please um, don't hesitate to contact me uh, I can tell you more about how you can proceed from here it's a beautiful beautiful time to just get to know him because he is waiting for all of us he's waiting to to really help uh, to make himself be known to you and i pray that you know you will have a wonderful journey with him and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me i love you guys god bless and may all with all of this may god be praised bye